Okay, here's a quick look at a Nespresso Milk Frother. I think it's a Arancino 3. This came in for repair. Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't repair it. Uh, it's a bit of a shame. These are really nice bits of kit. We've had one for years and years and years, and it's been very reliable. But uh, yeah, this one is not, not great. We had fun and games opening it. It has these uh, security dry head screws on the bottom. And uh, yeah, <laughs> there was a big struggle getting it open. I uh, fairly recently bought one of these, which you may have seen. Team U job. Where the hell's the thing? There we go. There's loads and loads of bits. Actually, it's very, very good. That was about eight quid. It's really, really useful. Uh, and one of them is, is a tri head, uh, which actually fitted this. And I, I, the driver didn't work, so I had, I had to borrow uh, a larger driver because uh, the one in there is very thin. In fact, let me show you. So you don't you don't get a great deal of torque. So it's a really neat bit of kit, uh, and I, I really like this. This it's fantastic, but this is quite small. I mean, it's good in some ways. You don't want to have too much torque because if you have one of these tiny little, th I mean, look at the, look at the size of. Before I stab myself, look at the size of that there. That's absolutely tiny, absolutely tiny. So if this was too wide if you had too much mechanical advantage you could very easily strip that uh, and damage it so it's good to have a you know for the most part if it's finger tight with one of these that's good however the uh the larger drivers i mean there's there's socket ones and you know there's 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 larger sort of hex heads and stuff like that that's not really that much you don't get much uh, mechanical advantage on that really um so i uh for this one it was the largest try one, which is that that one there, and I uh, yeah I had to use something external to uh, a larger tool to grip to really grip hold of it and, and undo it. And then once you've done that, just away. Once you've done that, I love the way that stacks. That's great. You think okay, well that's great. I've got that uh, open. So what happens now? Um, now there's a rubber thing there for the switch that that eventually that pops out. You can dig it out, but there's no point. You just basically pull this whole thing out because that's rubber sort of springs out of the way so this thing does come apart now this bit separates from this bit and there is a slight you can see there's a slight lip there so you can actually get a spudger in it um, but it doesn't really work that well so what we ended up doing is taking a pair of pliers uh, I used a bit of cloth and then sort of working it out like that so pulling it actually not working now just uh need to get it started let me find my let me use all yeah so i did have this open and i did some testing uh, and there's a a very neat little circuit board in there that does stuff but I, there was no signs of life and um quite frankly it's dead <laughs> um Oh my goodness, this is proving to be very tricky now. Now it's not actually wanting to open. Right, let me try this again. Oh, oh it is moving, it is opening slowly. There we go. You just have to get over this initial bit of friction. <laughs> so that's that's the internals. Very, very neat bit of kit. Um, we did do some testing. There was nothing obvious on the board that we could see. Uh, there's the motor. And uh, this is all a sealed unit. So this spins and inside there you have a little lug. Whoops, which way around does it go? You have a little lug uh, and this thing magnetically couples to it and spins around. So the magnet is, is inside this this sealed unit. You can just about see it in there. So it goes in down there. Um, so that's cool. It all, you know, it's a very neat bit of kit, as I say, but it is not working. And yeah, we could probably get a replacement board, but I've got a couple of these and I don't really need that at the moment. However, I was thinking of maybe taking it to pieces further. Um, if you look down here, this thing, is a is the heating element so it's a ceramic heating element 
and it's all very neat. So if I could somehow separate that from there uh, and see and do some testing, see if I could actually get this um, maybe powered up with DC or some, something like that. I'm thinking that maybe I could use it as a, a mug warmer, something like that. I, I'm not sure. So this connects here via these these contacts, these spring-loaded contacts. So it's, it's quite a neat construction. Um, I think that is the power to this. This thing here, I think that there is a thermocouple, so it can detect the... Uh, is it a thermocouple? I imagine it probably is. Um, yeah, so there's some heat transfer compound there. This is now maybe my screwdriver dirty. Um, so that, yeah, that would be some kind of thermocouple, thermistor, something like that, to, to feed back the temperature of, of the milk um, to control that, uh, that heater circuit. So yeah, it's a very, very neat bit of kit. Um, and as I say, ours has been, we've had ours for absolutely years and years and years. It's a really, really neat construction. Um, they do burn. So the milk eventually burns uh, and makes this deposit. So you have to keep cleaning it. This, whoever had this, didn't clean it as much as perhaps they should. So there's a buildup of stuff in there, uh, which is a bit nasty. But um, yeah, so... Taking it, to, taking it apart further, I'm not sure. So those are spring-loaded there. I'm not sure how that's actually connected to it. So this is these bits are welded. Um, so it's probably possible to bend this stuff out of the way. I mean, this this is this is knackered, and I, there's no point in you know, messing about too much. Ah, oh, that all comes off. So if you do that, you can easily bend that out of the way. And oh, oh, blimey! <laughs> Okay, didn't expect that. So the whole thing comes out really easily. It's just, uh, yeah, it's got a retention uh, bit there. <laughs> okay, I really didn't expect that. So that's it. It's a very neat, very neat bit of kit. There, there's the power spurs. So those things connect to the base. So in there, you can see that the you've got got the two connectors. Uh, that's all very neat. It goes onto the base there. Lovely bit of kit. Very nice. Well, I'm quite surprised that, that came out as easily as that. Um, so what, I don't know, uh, what is there to salvage out of this thing? I'm not sure. There's probably things we could do. Um, yeah, I wonder, I wonder. Okay, well, I'm gonna investigate this further. Um, now this has come out in one unit, I'm kind of tempted to have a look online, see if there are replacement ones, but yeah, I'm not sure. As I say, I've I've already I've already got one. Um, in fact, I've got two. <laughs> uh, yeah, getting that off there might be tricky. So I think that's is it welded on or glued on or something. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Um, I'm, just, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do it. I'm just gonna have a little bit of a feel around and see what that what that feels like. I don't want to put any pressure on it. I just want to feel. Oh, is that actually moving? Hang on. No. I wonder what that's bonded like with. It's obviously bonded somehow, glued or something, because that is, um, yeah, they're two separate pieces of metal. There's no doubt about that. Um, I was thinking that if I could get this heating element off, I was, I was wondering maybe with my coffee cup, I could, because uh, that's the perfect size, make a little stand for it, sort of this, so this turns upside down, and then have that sort of sat on top, sat on top of this. Uh, on, on my on my bench, I don't know why I need need that, but it's just a fun thing to play with, and uh, maybe power it via twelve volt. Um, I'm I'm not sure. I mean, none of this may work. It was just entirely theoretical. Anyway, so I'm going to have a having a further go at this. Um, I'm tempted to do something with that motor, but it just seems a shame. It's got this lovely sealed magnetic. Oh, look look at that! Bloody hell! Wow, that is. That is a strong, that is a strong magnet. <laughs> so that, obviously, all. Oh, excuse me. 
<clears throat> so this 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 whole thing spins around. This magnet spins around. I don't know whether I need it. I don't need it. Oh, there's a beast of a motor though. I don't know. <clears throat> I'm going to investigate it further. Uh, maybe there's something I could do with the thermocouple. Uh, do some further testing. Get the motor out. See what see what's going on there. I don't know what's wrong with it. As I say, we've kind of written it off. Part of the problem with it is it's covered in in this compound. It's like a lacquer kind of stuff, and it makes it difficult to test stuff because you can't you can't put any probes on it because it doesn't conduct. And yeah. So there we go. There's a there's a fuse. Th is that a thermal fuse there as well? Must be a thermal cutout. Yeah. Well, neat bit of kit. Anyway, that's enough for now. Uh, I'm gonna hopefully, if I if I can separate this uh, and I can make another video and uh, do some testing and see if I can build a um, mug warmer. That'd be nice. Uh, really not sure that I need one, but hey, it keeps me off the streets. See you next time.